All right. I'd like to call the meeting, the Board of Selectmen meeting, open for Tuesday, November 19th, 2019. Before we get started, would you please stand with me and let's salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All righty, before we get started, just for the record, um, Mr. Crapman is not going to be here tonight, and Ms. Stronach is running a little bit late, um, just for housekeeping, Melissa. So, looking at our schedule items, we have a seven o'clock appointment with Representative Robinson. However, David is also late tonight, so it must be really bad traffic out there. So, um, our next schedule appointment is for 7.20, so why don't we, as a board, Let's just bounce to a couple things that we can clean up. First and foremost, why don't we do, um, why don't we jump to board <clears throat> member reports? How about Miss Jane Wellman? Thank you, sir. Um, so today in the Boston Globe on these, there is a spotlight article on transportation and congestion of traffic into Boston. Um, and it was, it's actually a pretty compelling piece. And so since we don't have any commuter rail service here in Tewksbury, I was interested in what the board thought about the town uh, doing a survey or ascertaining is there a need or a desire by the residents to have um, an express shuttle that goes into Boston so people can go into South Station or North Station or whatever it is um, to commute and then they don't have to drive. Um, so that would be a pay service uh, that would that would run it, you know, paid for by the, the people who take that. But um, so I'm curious to see if there's any interest in that because traffic is only getting worse, and um, we have a number of residents that commute into Boston. So, or something I can take back to NIMCOG to see if they want to do um, help us with a study or something along those lines. But I just wanted to see if the board was interested in something like that. So we can bring it back to the town and ask them to look at it, or um, bring it on a future agenda item. So. Something I had for you. I think that's reasonable. I mean, is that something you bring to NIMCOG and potentially bring it back, collect, and work with NIMCOG and bring it back yes. collectively? <clears throat> yes, I'm meeting with NIMCOG. We have a meeting tomorrow night, so it's something I can bring up to them. We can um, talk to whichever entity. I'm sure that there's some parking spot spaces available. We could do something like that in town. I think it's a good idea. Every time I try to go to Wilmington, the parking lot's always full. I'm going to drop the yeah. kids off. So, all right. Yeah, Very that's good. exactly cool. that issue. Yep. Okay. All right. Very good. Anything else, Mr. Bowman? No, sir. Mr. Brian Dick. Yeah, I just uh, served on that, that one committee, the Athletic Field Subcommittee. So <clears throat> we plan on, uh, it's, getting to, it's getting close to uh, the end of Doucette Field up at the uh, Ryan School. So <clears throat> we'll probably have a meeting second week in December to get some updates from the Elementary Building Committee as well as the architect and the project management. So that's on our radar, probably second week in December having a meeting to just get some updates and where the project stands on the development of the athletic field and the, uh, the buildings that go into that project. That's about it. All right, perfect. I think I just have just a few things. We started a committee, we had our first committee meeting for, we call it the Taxation Relief Committee. So essentially this was a committee started way back when and the dollars in this particular fund, I think it's around 9K, and how that 9,000 got into that particular fund is we would send out a bill, and in the bill there would be a little uh, insert saying, would you like literally like to donate? You know how sometimes you go to a store and they say you want to give a buck? So we kind of dusted that committee off. Um, we're going to see we have $9,000 in the kitty. Number one, we have to formulate an application so that folks can apply. And again, it's going to be certain criteria a very structured application to see which folks are well deserving of potential funds. And the second piece that we may consider is, do we just use the funds allocated in that particular um, bucket and or do we establish another insert? I'm not too sure we're gonna establish another insert, but the committee was kicked off. We're gonna start with the application and so kind of like to be determined in January and February about that application. Needy folks would apply based on a certain criteria and then the committee would decide where those dollars get sent. So, um, you know, we're not gonna solve world hunger. However, what the aim is to kind of take care of a few residents in need. So that's the update for the taxation committee. Um, we had a beautiful Veterans Day breakfast at the senior center. 
almost over 200 veterans, veterans. that was really cool. Um, and again, our Veterans Day ceremony uh, last week was always incredible. I always say it makes the hair stand up on the back of your neck. It was very cool. And last but not least, on a very positive note, the Tewksbury Redmen, the high school football team, um, three straight wins at, speaking of Doucette Field, and we're playing at Xavier 230 against D Duxbury, mm -hmm. um, and that's the semifinals for Division Three. If we win that, we go to the Super Bowl where Tom Brady plays. So congratulations to Coach Aylwood and team, uh, and good luck um, on Saturday. And I think that's that's all I had under um, board member reports. So let's jump. I think we have some minutes. Yes, um, I would like to move that we approve the meeting minutes of June 4, 2019 regular session. Uh, second. Motion, I have a second. I, I, I'll second that. He seconded it. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 It passes. Um, I think pretty. we had a very loose agenda because we had Mr. Robinson. We're going to talk about um, the Verizon ascertainment hearing. That's at 730. So at this time, why don't we jump? Any residents at this time would like to speak? Okay, seeing none. Looks like we had Mr. Robinson. Perfect time, and the traffic must have been horrible out there. Oh, there was a slight delay. Someone you're, you're good, you're good, you're good. To the rear of another. You're good, you're only, oh, you're, oh that is bad. Oh. All right, 710, Mr. Okay, Robinson. You. I'll let you get settled in. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to look very quickly before we do the quick intro. And Mr. Montori, just to take care of another agenda, I don't think there's anything which is unbelievable on the town manager section, Mr. Montori? No, there's just a couple of quick things, Mr. Chairman. Um, the, uh, the town received uh, speed limit regulation documents from MassDOT uh, a little over a week ago, uh, and they revised speed limits on Shawsheen Street, Andover Street, and Whipple Road. Uh, DPW reviewed the uh, information that was sent, and there was some, uh, there was a typo uh, in regard to the northbound speed limit from Sh on Shawshank Street uh, in the front of the Heathbrook School that needed to be corrected, which the uh, Mass uh, DOT will uh, make that adjustment, send new documents for the board to approve. So at the next meeting, uh, I'll bring forward the documents to adjust the speed limits. Uh, there are four locations where the speed limit will decrease by five miles per hour uh, uh, on those streets. and. Um, I'll go into more detail on when I get the final documents for your next meeting. Uh, and then the only other thing, Mr. Chairman, I wanted to mention, uh, work on the Pinnacle Street uh, uh, culvert will start uh, next Tuesday, uh, a week from today, uh, and uh, the, uh, which is long-awaited uh, work. Uh, the residents in that area have been very patient, and I appreciate that. And we hope to see uh, the work completed within uh, three weeks, uh, weather permitting, and uh, get that uh, that uh, bridge open, that culvert open. That's it. That's, that's that's good news. We know the residents down there have been patient uh, and waited, you know, have been waiting for this. So hopefully the weather holds tight and we can take care of that. Okay, very good. Thank you. That's all, Mr. Montoya, you good? That's it. Okay, Thank very you. good. All right, Mr. David Robinson. Mr. Chair. Yes. Hey, Ms. Wellman, thank you. I appreciate you letting me come before you tonight. Um, I'd spoken with our town manager a few weeks back, I noticed on one of your agendas for the evening that uh, House Bill 3976, which has to do with the state's requirement uh, for certain sewage operators in the area along the Merrimack River and all of our public waterways, uh, take notice in the events of extreme weather, um, primarily stormwater runoff, and I'll get to that in a second, when there is partially or completely untreated sewage discharges. Uh, I called Mr. Montori, asked if he'd like to uh, ask any questions about the status of the bill or other ways that we're tackling this problem, and just kind of give you a general update. I know, uh, Ms. Wellman, you have brought it up before um, in a number of public forums, and we're very attentive on that, as well as some of the other uh, <coughs> issues we're having around the Merrimack River, um, which have been since resolved or in the process of fixing with via the state, the state of New Hampshire when they're cooperative, and our federal delegation. So. The 32nd uh, Cliff Notes version of 3976, it's pretty non-controversial, has widespread support. Um, for those at home that may not know, a combined sewage overflow is what this bill addresses. And a uh, combined sewage overflow, or a CSO, is an event in a lot of what we would call now gateway cities, but post-industrial cities, the Lowell's, the Lawrence's, the Haverhill's, where they experienced major industrial, commercial, and residential growth, and during this time frame, they installed a sewage system. They went from 
basically open channel pits to closed pipes and simultaneously tapped into each of the private properties, but also their rainwater culverts drain directly. Over the decades, we've upgraded the water systems, but New England's weather and habitat's changing. We're experiencing uh, more compressed rainfall into higher degrees than we had before. And this is overwhelming the systems with rainwater on occasion, mm -hmm. which then the wastewater treatment operators discharge and bypass the containment directly into things such as the Merrimack River. Upstream from Tokesbury, the different communities that do it are the Lawrence Municipal Area, Lowell, Nashua, Manchester, which is one of the least cooperative ones. Um, they've been kind of fighting on us on, on disclosure of how much discharge there is. Um, in Haverhill, the Massachusetts uh, wastewater management operators, as a show of good faith, have been communicative mm -hmm. with both the state, DEP, the EPA, as well as many of the municipalities, making us aware of how often this happens. Mm -hmm. But this bill takes it a step further. This bill requires uh, municipality operators to react within a certain time frame, not days after, not hours after, within two hours. It requires it to do it through a couple different venues, um, not just you know, the newspaper the next day when it's far too late, but on the municipal websites, on the wastewater operator's website if they have one, or the DPW, the subsequent municipality, as well as directs um, the Department of Environmental Protection and the municipalities themselves to take a look forward and seeing if there's other ways. Um, one of the things that kind of floated from DEP was the idea of implementing sort of a reverse 911 style. We in Tuxbury do it, get your cars off the road, reminder from the DPW, it would be along the same lines. Um, something I want to make folks aware though, while this does occur on occasion, it again does not impact the quality of our drinking water. Tuxbury ensures that quality maintains its fit for human habitation, it's fine to feed your pets, it's okay to shower in, there's nothing there. But this is merely undoing all the hard work the towns, the state, and the federal government have done since the Clean Water Act was first passed. So. Um, anyone have any questions about it? Just Mr. Thank, thank you, Mr. Onik. Um, let me open it up to the board for questions. How about Ms. Wellman? Um, I'm glad that you brought this forward. Um, I support the intentions of this bill. It is, what's the downside of this bill? Does it have any, and are there any ex costs that would be incurred by any municipality other than sort of these large industrial towns? To be frank, all of our infrastructure is already in place for what that's this right. bill would require. We've done reverse 911 calls. We have a, a, a website that's already up functioning and secure. It might require our IT department to come up with a banner to put across the top with a, a URL directing them. Mm -hmm. The real cost for this and the reason why it met some initial resistance, frankly, is just the embarrassment that the public wastewater system can, can have. And, and I think after discussion, we realized it was uh, the folks that operate and manage these plants realized it wasn't accusatory. Yes. This is a public safety thing. Yeah. Well, we were saying, look, you're doing, you're doing the best you can with a, with a wastewater right. plant that was built in 1996. Mm -hmm. You all, as fellow public servants, know sometimes it's hard to sell folks saying, look, our storage tank will last another 25 years, but twice a year it's over capacity. Well, that's a problem. What's the cost? $110 million. Yeah. People yeah. balk at that price. Yeah. So I think um, that was really the, the only cost at the time was that some municipalities were a little embarrassed. But to be frank, water yeah. infrastructure is not the sexiest political issue. Again, sometimes it's hard to sell. And once they started to see attention being brought by the state, by the federal government, discussion across the state lines, um, most towns are on board. And yeah. like I said, not to be repetitive, but all the yeah. Massachusetts plant operators are pretty much already complying yeah. voluntarily. No, it's, it's New Hampshire predominantly at this point. And I understand that there's a, a separate group that's been um, created that's um, all along the Merrimack River that's working right. together to and instill some confidence, particularly with the Manchester folks, to say, you've inherited a system that is too expensive to fix, so it, you know that communication piece is going to be what makes it safer for everybody and at least gives our, our operators a chance to treat the water proactively. And, so. and I think in the words of Chair Kelly, right, the, the two big things when it comes to the municipal bills is what's the cost and what's the commitment? Yep. There's no cost here and the commitment is, okay, we'll, we'll tweet out that this is occurring during a rainstorm yep. and we'll put a URL on our DPW website saying, sure. be aware that this is happening. How is it different than this bill? What's so, this? You didn't talk about this one yet. That's correct. Okay. 751, um, forgive me, um, 
so I actually, the first committee that this bill hit is the Environmental, Natural Resources, and Agricultural Committee. 751 was just the House version of that filed. They rectified that with, I think it was Senate Bill 459. Um, and the combined vanilla and chocolate version is this one in front of you here. Okay. That was just a reference for where the path had started, the changes, and where we are now. Uh, where we are now is the House Committee on Ways and Means, and they literally met with the primary filers of the bill this afternoon on it, mm -hmm. having received it. So the bill's moving forward at a decent pace. Thank you. Very good. How about Mr. Brian Dick? Yeah, no, no questions. Uh, I haven't really had a chance to dive into it. I will. Sure. I appreciate the literature tonight. Um, really, the bottom line is <clears throat> no cost, no commitment, no impact to our drinking water, correct? That's correct, sir. So, All three. So from Tewksbury standpoint, uh, this is good information. We're aware of it. Um, so I'm glad you were able to make us aware of it, and I don't think there's really anything else to talk about it. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I'm, I'm happy with the... The comments, the direction, all that stuff. So. Absolutely, and, and if anything does change or it threatens any of those three tenants, I'll be sure to let you all know. Yeah, thank you. Awesome, Astronic. Um, sorry for my lateness. I had a um, wig to attend to. Um, I only have one question, Please. and the question is, if why the need to legislate something like this? If this is such a no-brainer, why why the need to legislate it? I mean. Again, I think it was the kind of embarrassment on, on the legacy infrastructure that some municipalities are saddled with. I think they were afraid that, and don't get me wrong, there's absolutely a public health risk here, but I think they were worried about an internet game, a telephone. Um, the primary risk is for those who will boat, swim, or do other, other water in the water activities after such a discharge occurred. And that happens a lot. There's a heavy rainfall, the weather's now beautiful, folks go out, and they make use of the water more than any other days, at least according to a lot of the parks and rec departments. And they didn't want folks to all of a sudden panic thinking what's coming through their tap is not okay. We know that's treated, and we might say it, but the general public needed to kind of be eased into it. That was one of the arguments that came up. Now I think the general public's smart enough on their own to realize that, well, between the river and my tap, there's a number of steps which protects us here. Um, since then, I really do think, though, despite that initial embarrassment and hesitation, again, which is why these municipal wastewater operators were resistant, they've now come around and see this is no longer something we're doing the best. There's no longer something to be embarrassed about. We're now doing our best with what we have here. And people are going to take note and realize that this is a problem we need to fix. This is a problem we need to talk to our state uh, delegation or our congressperson about and get some attention on this thing. Um, I've seen estimates, Lowell's put in $110 million over the last few years upgrading them. But they said for every municipality that would impact a public waterway, similar to either the Merrimack or the Nashua River, which is a Merrimack tributary, or Charles River, right? I mean, we all remember the Stan Devil song about dirty water. Um, it takes several billion dollars. That's a federal commitment. So um, I think folks are starting to embrace it and realizing that if we see the severity of these discharges and we see it, people are going to wake up and notice and start putting pressure on the right places to fix it. And it's no longer embarrassment, but now an opportunity. Thank you. Appreciate that. Very good. And Mr. Robinson, I think I am good. You answered my questions. No cost, sure. no commitment. Um, and the bill is actually going through as we speak. So I, I think I'm good. Mr. Montfiore, anything on your side? No, it's just if the board's comfortable at some point, they can um, vote to maybe send a letter on behalf, uh, in support of the legislation, and um, we can send that in on behalf of the town. Do we have that in motion? So moved. For motion, I have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Very good. Thank you very so much, Mr. Robinson. Received. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. And if I might add one more thing. Uh, absolutely. Uh, in case anyone else comes across a member of the community asking about the folks in Nashua trucking down wastewater to be treated through Lowell, mm -hmm. Lowell has stopped. The municipality has revoked that program as what they quote under an abundance of uh, precautionary measures. So uh, PAFS, which you remember the Boston Globe broke, by the time actually I made it back into the office after that story broke and called, they were already rescinding it. So, yeah. That's I, I always we got to be careful for those type of stories. I mean, that did kind of hit the panic button a little bit. So, but you know, we we like the FYI or heads up, but we also have to be very careful when we do advertise that type of stuff because <laughs> the uh, our phones are off the hook. <laughs> the but, 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 I but but thank you for the FYI. So pleasure. All right, Mr. Robinson. Thanks again. Thank you. Very awesome. Much. Thank you. All right. Why don't we move to? I believe it's seven. 
perfect timing, 720. So the next order of business is the application of the 99 Restaurant of Boston, LLC, DBA, 99 Restaurants and Pub by Jonathan H. Freeman, manager, has applied for a change of officer and directors and change of beneficiary interest. So this is a public hearing, so I have a motion to waive, waive, waive the public reading. Make a motion to waive the public. Second. Yeah, public I have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Sorry. First and foremost, and I'll call it, are there any abutters that would like to come forth on behalf of this schedule item? Okay, seeing none. So do I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved, Mr. Chairman. A motion to have a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. What is the pleasure of the board? I think all the paperwork was in line, um, signed off um, by the proper officials. Any questions to Mr. Montour? Any questions in general? What's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Um, Chairman, I would like to move the request as presented. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, unanimous. Thank you. Next order of business, perfect timing, 725. National Grid Verizon Pull Petition to be installed between the Greenhouse Road and Livingston to serve one building at 500 Livingston Street. Do I have any representations from National Grid? Interesting, seeing none. Um, I know we've done these before. This is a public hearing, so do I have a motion to open a public hearing? Actually, I'm sorry, before we do that, Ms. Wellman, Mr. Montori, do I have the right to proceed without a, represent re without a representative? Um, I think you can. It seems pretty straightforward. Um, it's, it's kind of, it's, they're usually here, so I don't know if you want to just hold off on it and maybe someone shows up in the next 10 minutes. Yeah, that's fine. I think it's easy business. And to your point, Mr. Montori, I drove down there. This one's pretty easy. There's one house, um, yeah. and, and, and it's right by the state yeah. hospital the, there. So, so yeah. let's hold off on that one, and we can always revisit it. So that brings us to – actually, before I do that, just out of respect to my colleague, what I'd like to do um, – Ms. Stronach, we covered a number of items, including residents, town manager, minutes. Do you have any board reports? The only board report that I have is that the um, tree lighting ceremony is coming up. And I think that that is we're meeting on um, December 3rd, but it's that week. December 6th. Friday night, yep. December 6th. I was trying to do the math in my head. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, we have been going to get a tree this weekend for the center of town. So that's also exciting. I want to thank everybody who's working on that. The elementary building committee um, met last week. Um, there was no real new business to report. They went to the planning board last night. They are getting ready to request a special permit and we're still just in the informational phase. So, and same thing with conservation. So we just continue to plow on. That's on Mr. Chairman. Okay, perfect. All right, very good. And that's going to bring us to the 730 hearing. So this is the Verizon ascertainment hearing. Um, first and foremost, do I have a motion? What I'm going to do is read. Uh, I'm going to read a little something. It's a little more in-depth than the public notice. So do I have a motion to waive the public notice? There's a motion to waive. I make a motion to waive the public notice. I have a motion. I have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, before we get going, just, for, you know, this is um, very standard stuff, so I'm just going to read something very quickly. This is the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, town of Tewksbury. This is a public hearing on Verizon Television Franchise Renewal, November 19, 2019. Welcome to the town of Tewksbury's public hearing on Verizon's cable license renewal. The notice of this hearing was in the local newspaper two successive weeks. The copies of the legal advertisement are being entered into the record as the ascertainment hearing exhibits. Very fancy there, fancy stuff. Uh, by the way, of a brief, brief background for the public, Verizon's cable license expires on May 29, 2021. Federal state law requires the holding of a public ascertainment proceedings, including this hearing, to identify the public, the public and our needs um, related to cable-related needs, specifically to, to Verizon. The process of the ascertainment of the community cable needs and interest will remain open until further notice. So the bottom line in this proceeding, we are open to accepting comments about all cable related matters and interest to the public, including but not limited to customer service, the town's needs. We're gonna hear from some town, um, some town folks and uh, as far as the local studio, community program and public, educational and government access. 
Um, we welcome public comments on any cable matter. The, the members of the Board of Selectmen may also have comments. So at this time, we are ready to open up to the public hearing. Um, and I would only ask that we keep our um, no longer than five minutes. And just for the record, we do have our special, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call him our specialized cable lawyer. Um, Mr. Bill August is, is in the house as well. So, so with that being said, would anyone like to start our proceedings, our hearings? You guys wanna go? Yeah. Yeah. And just for the record, and well, yeah, come up. Sure. And then just for the record, and just name and, and address or occupation for the town, that's sure. all. Yeah, we have some uh, stuff for you guys. Perfect. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Good welcome. Thank you very much, Jason. I'll do just a quick intro. For an introduction, we have Mr. Brian Dorian. He's the director. And we have Jason Marshall. He's in operations. And a big shout out to Courtney, that's always behind the scenes. Big shout out. Mr. Dorian. All right, so thank you all for uh, letting me speak tonight. What you have in front of you is a uh, five-year capital plan that we're required to put together as part of the ascertainment process um, for Verizon. Um, I I've laid out the needs that I think that we will need within the, within the next five years. Um, of course, technology is, is constantly changing, and with the FCC regulations, you know, who, who knows where that's going. Um, but this is a general needs list uh, that we'd like to present to Verizon. And before that, I just kind of wanted to highlight some of the growth we've had over the past uh, you know, few years. We've really only been in existence for probably exactly a year almost to the day. Um, and I'll just give a, a quick uh, highlights of some of the things we've done. Uh, in the past year, we've done over 90 government meetings. Um, that includes Board of Selectmen, Board of Health, School Committee, Zoning Board, Planning Board, Conservation Commission, other meetings. Um, we filmed over 40 library programs, which include author visits, lecture, uh, lectures, concerts, presentations. Um, this Thanksgiving Day football game will be our 30th uh, sporting event that we filmed. Um, and then we've also filmed over um, 30 community and school events, uh, including things like ice cream with a, pa uh, with a cop, impact of underage drinking, the line of march, how to keep your children safe online, the bike rodeo, uh, National Honor Society ceremony, and many more. And then of course, uh, everybody's favorite show, The Taste of Tewksbury. We filmed eight episodes of those. Uh, our, our, um, the amount of views we've had on YouTube have grown tremendously. Um, we've had 18,000 views in the past year, which is pretty good for a station of our size. Um, our most watched program was actually last week's football game, which had uh, 200 live views and over, and over 1,200 views total at this point. Um, we also did a, a number of upgrades to our systems. We have hopefully fixed the town hall audio. I haven't had any complaints, so I, I think that's, that's been fixed. We got a new production uh, server a new broadcast swi uh, switcher, and then we built a portable production cart for the high school. Um, and we also upgraded their studio lights as well. So those are just some of the things we've done in the past year. And moving forward, we're gonna continue to need to grow. Some of our more important needs are uh, a transport vehicle, continued repairs in town hall for audio and for cameras, um, remote field equipment, and then eventually uh, a new uh, production server, probably an FY25. And then you also have a few letters of some people that we reached out to to just get some of their thoughts on um, working with us. And um, I think there might be some people in the public here who'd like to speak. Just very good. And just one thing, Mr. Chairman, I think Brian provided some written testimony from two individuals. Uh, from three individuals, yeah, there should be some written testimony yep. there. That will, that will um, include in the record. Correct. Yes. Okay, one from, just, just for the record, I'm not going to read them, but um, one from Mr. Robert Hayes, one from Cam Smith, 
another one from um, Jeremy Sellison. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Sure. Yeah. And yours was very, very thorough. Thank you guys per usual. This was, sure. yeah, this no was, this was impressive. Um, any comments or questions from the board for Brian and or Jason? Ms. Wallen? Um, I thought I would um, save my comments until the residents had a chance. Okay, that's fine. Fair enough. Perfect. Okay, anything else? Nice. Uh, I think that's it. Okay. Very good. Okay, we might have some questions at the end from the board, but at this time what we're going to do is just open up to just more residents. That's all. Yes. Uh, please to that one too much. Hi, uh, Bill August, the uh, town's cable council. Just was the uh, capital needs report and uh, equipment report, Brian, that you referenced uh, circulated and entered into the hearing record? Because I, I just, it's sometimes yes. helpful for us if we uh, put in negotiations know that it's part of the official ascertainment record. Uh, yes, it was. Okay, thank you. Thanks again, gentlemen. Welcome. Thank you, guys. How about any other residents at this time? Please. <laughs> First, I want to begin by saying this too bad. Oh, Oh, I'm sorry. Just name it. Just name an address for the record. Oh, I'm sorry. Joan Anger from 160 County. <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. I want to congratulate Richard for hiring these two men. They are wonderful. They're smart. They're kind. They're doing a great job. They work hard, and they've already made a big difference. I mean that. And but I envision even more for the public access channel. This is what I would like to say. A program director who would organize the programs and work with the media director and the um, operations manager. Operations manager to market the channel to groups. I'd like to see more groups involved. The, um, for example, community groups, the well, town groups, historical committee, the senior center, other town groups civic organizations such as the Rotary, the Lions, Sons of Italy, Garden Club, see some shows like real estate shows that could help help buyers and sellers that would be of interest to the community, could bring in um, mortgage brokers, um, home inspectors, help people. I think they would be interesting. A program to educate high school, college students, or retired folks in the use of the cameras, recording devices, lighting, editing, etc., they could go out into the community and televise some of the above programs, and this could be helpful to the present people who are doing so much now. And these could be volunteers; they could be trained in. I think I believe this is what many other towns do. And an advisory board to work with the media department and co-partner in some decisions. And, and, and a lot of people don't realize that the uh, cable t channel, the public access, is funded by the cable participants, not by the taxpayers. And I think that's all. This is, this is what I've always envisioned. For more than 20 years, I've wanted, this is what I hope that we could have for the town. And thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, I think we're getting there, but we have a lot to do. Now, Ms. Sung, will you enter that into the record as well? Will you enter that into the record? Yes, please. Just Mr. Monturi. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joan. All right. Any other additional residents, please? Good evening, Paige Impink, Gettys Drive. The establishment of a public access station in Tewksbury has been a necessary and welcome enhancement for the residents of the town. Tewksbury Telemedia, in its still young state, is bringing school, government, and public programming to the community. 
While Tuxbury did enjoy a limited amount of PEG programming prior to the development of the telemedia department, the user experience for both research and enjoyment has been multiplied tenfold. Residents now may access video on demand content from their computers or watch a program on one of three television channels. Having a public access platform which supports an educated and informed citizenry has brought Chesapeake residents the opportunity to observe public meetings, cheer on high school sports teams, watch graduation, and even watch movies in a variety of public domain programming, which I encourage you to take advantage of. Some pretty neat stuff. Through the experience of Brian and Jason, Tewksbury has enjoyed live local election coverage, broadcast of Tewksbury Public Library programming, the development of original content, and has moved to expand production capabilities through facilities both in this building and at the high school. The telemedia department has engaged residents in front of the camera and behind the scenes as well, even offering students the chance to host a program earlier this year and to intern and learn about production and field work. I'm excited to see what the future holds for Tewksbury and the telemedia group and would like to thank the board, the town manager, and the residents for supporting this endeavor. Very good, thank you, well said. And Ms. Page, would you also um, place, would you like to put that to the record for the hearing? Thank you. And I guess just for the, um, just for the residents, Mr. Montori, keep me honest here, but if another resident after watching this also, whether they have, um, whether it's a complaint or a positive um, statement at any time, can they still bring something down and submit it to the Board of Selectmen office? Yes. Okay, very good. That's for the residents watching. Okay, very good. How about any other residents would like to speak on, on this topic? Sure, come up to the podium, young man. And just name it, just, and just name an address for the record, please. Uh, Andrew Delpion, a Prospect Hill Drive. Um, I'm a sophomore at the uh, high school and uh, I'm the PA and play-by-play uh, -play for Took Spray High School Basketball Varsity and Took Spray Football Varsity. I just wanna thank Brian and Jason for all the great work they've done for me and give me an opportunity to start doing sports broadcasting and that's what I wanna do in life and they've just done a great job and helped me work towards that goal and hopefully I can make that a reality one day. Okay, very good. Great, very you. good, thank you. I'd like to be your agent. Someday you are going to be a professional. I'm telling you, he's going to be a professional. Exciting games to announce. You are outstanding, so thank you very much. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Very good. How about any other residents at this time? Seeing none. So what I'd like to do is close the public hearing and then let's bring it back to the board. Oh, I'm sorry. Any other? keep the public hearing open for a little? Can they close tonight, the public hearing? You can close the public hearing, but uh, we, the microphone. We, we may close this particular public hearing, but the public ascertainment process itself um, should be noted as ongoing. Okay. Because under the Cable Act, uh, the, 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 the renewal section, uh, uh, provides for an ascertainment process that continues. Um, it includes particular um, public hearings, opportunities for public hearings, but uh, so with this hearing closed, you may uh, uh, schedule and have additional uh, public hearings and uh, opportunities for public participation and comment. Okay, I'm just used to being informal. If we don't need to close the hearing, let's not close it. <laughs> Is that fair enough? What was the question? Um, if we don't need them, um, we're used to closing public hearings. If we don't need to make a motion to close it because the ascertainment is going to stay open, why even make the motion? Let's just keep it open. Um, well, so, some uh, selectmen will keep it, the hearing open if it's continued to a date certain but not in, in an indefinite way. So let's do this. I got you, Mr. August. Let's yeah. do this. Right. How about we entertain a motion to close this specific tonight, this evening's public hearing? Right, that but to reserve the right and make clear to the public and the record that you're reserving the right to have additional hearings as needed. Very good. Thank okay, you. Good. Perfect. Thank you. 
Right. Do I have that to form a motion? I'll make the motion that we close tonight's public hearing and reserve the right to reopen the hearing at a future date. Very good. I have a motion. I have a second. I have one friendly suggestion. <laughs> what? You're welcome to sit at the table, sir. But just to uh, it, 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 maybe keep the hearing record for open uh, for written comments for to till a date certain in case any one of the audience wants to file comments. It's not necessary. You can just close it mm -hmm. and accept the comments, and we can re-enter it in other ways. But you know, that's another option. Is just keep the. Mm -hmm. A record open for written comments for two weeks and it'll close after that. Um, yes. as, as, well. as a question uh, to council, when do you intend to commence your negotiations? Um, do you have a date yet? We don't have a date yet. Okay. Um, but we're about halfway through the three year window that the K Black provides. So they're about 18. It okay. expires in May uh, 2021. We're in the 11th month of night, so about 18 months. I would like, to, it's good for a town to uh, commence informal negotiations a good 14 months before the expiration to show the company that you're serious uh, and have high expectations, which uh, Tooks very clearly does have. And uh, so I would say uh, commence infor informal negotiations mm -hmm. Um, about 14 months before. And, and you know, there are change, ch so about 14 or 15 months. Okay, so we're not before. under the gun, is my point, yeah. to get these. And one thing to keep in. in the back of your minds is that although the renewal, although the current license expires in May of 2021, it, in one sense, you don't really have that full period of time. Because under the Cable Act, should you should a town, a franchising authority, want to switch from informal negotiations, which right. the Cable Act allows, into this other procedure called the, the formal renewal process, um, that includes issuance of an RFP to the incumbent. It's not an RFP to the world like most RFPs. It's an RFP specification. That has to be issued, to keep this in the back of your mind, uh, five months before the expiration. So even with the okay. May 2021 expiration date, which seems like a long way off, you keep the formal process in your back pocket if needed, uh, and then that would have to be undertaken five months before expiration. And you hope to resolve through informal negotiations, which the majority of towns do. But sometimes it's a dual track of both. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, all right. So Thank you very much. Then I would amend my motion to say that we close the public hearing for tonight with the uh, res reserve the right to open it at a future date over the next, you know, 18 months, if any time over that period. And um, that we uh, keep the hearing open for written comments from the public for the next 30 days. I'll take that form as a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you very much. All right, why don't we bounce back to scheduled items. We have anyone from National Grid, any representation from National oh, Grid? Oh, no, um, I have comments to make on the hearing. Oh, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's open it up to the board for questions and comments. Ms. Wellman. Thank you, sir. Sorry. Um, so I had a couple of questions and, um, that I wanted to ask and, uh, and, and put into the record um, as you go forward with negotiations because we're talking about the Verizon license renewal um, and that is the vehicle by which we fund our department and by which we uh, get capital uh, funding for. So um, I had a question from a resident tonight wondering if this license involves at all 5G antenna installation. And I think that is not the case, but I'd like to confirm that. And once you set up the- um, I'm gonna have more. That's a, that's a great question to bring up for municipalities uh, in the, as, as, as Richard knows, he has been diligently looking at and working on uh, uh, municipal policies pertaining to uh, 5G wireless, because the FCC uh, rules on uh, 5G uh, require like new kind of specific objective standards to uh, right. uh, enforce uh, local uh, uh, small cell wireless uh, policies. It, 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 it could impact 
the cable licensing because all the co cable companies require a level playing field clause. Um, and the level playing field clause, it's in the Comcast license and now it's in all the new Verizon licenses, says uh, and historically in the past, level playing field clauses said, if there's another cable company mm -hmm. and if it's subject to a lower, uh, uh, re lesser requirements than we, the cable company, then we get to crank down to the lower level of our competitors because we have to be on a level playing field. Now, uh, Verizon is in, in their uh, boilerplate licenses, which they're circulating for negotiations, um, including language to trigger the level playing field adjustments uh, to have the level playing field process and adjustments triggered, not just by what cable competitors are doing, hmm. but any new multi-channel video providers are doing. They're saying competition from 5G, from uh, Google TV, from uh, Disney TV, Apple. that's just as harmful to us. Right. So then you, so you, you have to really be on the alert that, that can be buried away in the fine print of a cable license. Mm -hmm. and you can wake up one day and uh, it's impossible to get the same uh, requirements out of a 5G wireless provider that you get out of a cable company because the FCC doesn't allow franchise fees up to 5% from 5G. They only allow cost recovery fees from 5G. Right. So you have to really chip away at those level playing field clauses to make them not applicable to 5G and wireless, or you could get surprised by that. <laughs> well, it's going to erode our, our, the bottom line, it can erode our revenue in this regard in other ways. Right, so, so now the revenues are for mm -hmm. PEG are just from the cable companies, right. and uh, here it's Verizon and Comcast, because you have, unfortunately, uh, you're one of about 120 Massachusetts towns that has two providers. Okay. But our, our ability to get compensation from 5G providers is very narrow and restricted. The FCC, in a very creative moment, uh, said that the uh, Cable Act, no, the Telecommunications Act restricts fees from telecommunications providers mm -hmm. to cost recovery. So you cannot okay. seek fair market rental value for your public ways. The federal government has kind of tied our hands behind our back on that. Yeah, no, I know yeah. that happened last year. Um, so some of the things that I was interested in pursuing with the renegotiation are, of course, uh, maximizing the return to the community um, for those PEG funds, and both for operating and the percent revenue uh, as commensurate with the Comcast license. Um, and I'd like to see Verizon provide an enhanced guide that has programming information. I know that they're reluctant to do that, and Comcast has been as well, but that's something I think that we should ask for. I think that we should ask for HD broadcasting for our local channels. Ver Verizon will agree to an HD PEG channel, which okay. is what Comcast started doing this July. Okay. Uh, July 2018, actually, Comcast finally, after resisting it. So they both do one PEG. HD channel. Okay, uh, I have not seen Verizon agree to the electronic programming guide, but it's great that you bring that up because that's one of the hot issues now yeah. in renewals. Town want, as the, these community channels are growing and becoming uh, more significant, um, it's, it reinforces them if they can have listings. But it's an uphill battle. I don't want to raise expectations on that. No, I know, I know that it is, and I know that they're, they're sort of saying, well, if we get it in this town, well, then we'll roll it out maybe later, and they're not approving it anywhere. But right, they're not approving <clears throat> it. It, it. There may be a couple of rare exceptions under special circumstances where there's like a very large consolidated area, but they have a hard time handling it where you have Sure. Small and medium-sized towns. Sure. With so many different program listings all over the place, it's exactly. a much more burdensome task than a lot of people realize. No, no, I understand. Um, I'm also one of the things I'd like to get a secure from them the assurance is that they won't change our channels, um, our channel lineups, uh, and if they do, they have right. to pay We're, for the remarketing the, of it. The Cable Act prohibits us from uh, uh, mandating 
that a particular programming service uh, remain on any one channel. Mm -hmm. Sort of the grand bargain of the Cable Act is we can negotiate these peg and franchise fees mm -hmm. and equipment payments for local facilities, but they didn't want like a thousand and one towns doing the uh, uh, program lineup. So we're not mm -hmm. supposed to regulate through the franchise or with by the, law on things having to do with the, the placement of their program. Their programming, right. But we can ask for them to pay for it you, and mitigate that cost yeah, to it, the town. Yeah, there if they there are some precedents yeah. where they'll uh, provide like a, a thousand or two thousand right. dollar fund yeah. to, to pub, make the public aware of the channel change. Right. Exactly. Right. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to see in the negotiations were um, Let me just grab my hand because I do want to. I can write this to you. Um, then it'll come in the minutes. But yeah, okay. and then the basic okay. customer service levels for the Verizon customer service because drives me nuts when I call and I have issues and I can't get them answered. So those kinds of things. So that, that I know that can be put into right. the Right. A uh, big part of agreement. the license is their reporting of uh, is the customer service standards, like their telephone response wait time. Yep. Um, and they report them out to the town. And reporting yep. that. Yep. Okay. That's great. And then for the board, um, I just wanted to say that I've spoken to the members of the Cable Advisory Committee that's been, we've been largely inactive since um, we produced the report and then we've met a few times with staff and they've done an outstanding job getting going and so forth. The, the Cable Advisory Board would like to reform with a new mission from the Board of Selectmen. Um, and it's our desire to sit down with uh, the staff and with Richard to, um, with the town manager to come up with some, um, pr uh, some proposed language for the board to accept, you know, in the next couple of months so that we can start meeting again and provide a partnership level of um, work with, with that as they have some really ambitious um, goals here and it's very exciting. I looked through your cable, your, your capital um, proposals and so there's a lot there and it's really, really good and there's people that still want to be involved. So if, you know, at the pleasure of the board, if, if you're okay with us kind of pr moving forward and coming up with that new mission. I, mean, I was going to bring it up to Ms. Joan Unger's point. I mean, that's, she mentioned like an advisory board yeah. to help out the folks. We already have a committee. It's been a little bit inactive. But why not? I don't even think we need a motion. Simply just going to kind of get it back going on a regular cadence to help and partner with, with our... And they're all here tonight, too. Exactly. So and that's Aaron Kniff and Donna Higgins and uh, Joan unger -Hart. I think that that's a great idea, but I think to um, Jane's point, I think it's very important that we change their mission because their mission was very specific to get it up and running. And um, so I do think that while we can... Um, Re uh, reactivate the committee, I think we have to look at what the goals and the mission was because I think you um, did, yeah. obviously you guys did a great job um, with your committee and um, right. that's why well, you've been inactive. Well, it, 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 I have no opinion one way or another obviously on cable committee or not cable committee, but if, if you do proceed with it and are thinking about the mission, since the re first phase of renewal is ascertainment of needs, mm -hmm. really the whole thing, it's like, you don't have to be a lawyer. It's just like needs, needs, needs. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Uh, the cable committees often, like they gather information pertaining to the town's cable related needs. That would be uh, like, can, can uh, bolster the record in negotiations, yeah. We have some of that. We, we had a, a report that we did with surveys and charrettes and so right. forth that I think we turned in two years ago. So I don't know if that's outside the time limit, but we can refresh that. Right. We'll, we'll work on that. Right. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. That's great ideas. Thank you, Ms. Wellman. How about Ms. Stronick? So um, first of all, I feel very blessed that we have um, Ms. Wellman on our committee who has done so much work on this. And it's great to see all the um, former um, cable advisory people here supporting this. But um, I would like to say to Ms. Unger's point, I thought that she was working on the director thing on the side. She's very active in getting people to um, promote the cable and to participate in it. So I just want to say thank you to um, Jason and Brian and Courtney for their work on this. And thank you for the members of the community who are keeping this 
um, as a vibrant part of our um, fabric. So just want to say thanks for that. Jane, thanks for your work on that. Thank you. Perfect. How about Mr. Brian Dick? Uh, yeah, nothing uh, to comment on <clears throat> other than Ms. Strong said everything that I was going to say, but, you know, the list of needs, that's uh, the start, as you're saying, uh, Mr. August. So I appreciate the list of needs and putting that together for us, <clears throat> that telemedia department, putting that together, and then everybody coming up and speaking. Uh, there's definitely a lot of passion, so I support this effort. Anything we can do, I can do to help along with the uh, negotiations and needs, all that stuff, I'm in right. favor of it. So uh, just big thanks. Great. And I'll try to be brief here. So just for the residents, this has nothing to do with rates. As a board, we usually beat people up for rates. That's our job, representing 30,000 people. There's nothing to do with rates, correct? Right. right. The comment I made about the, the Congress put us out of the business of re regulating the program lineup and the channel placement, same thing with, with rates. That's handled by either the, through the FCC rate setting process and to some extent by the state, but it's very minimal. Ms. Wellman covered the HD and the local listing. And just one more point about the um, firing up the cable committee again, just for the residents. That's awesome you guys are all here. And always remember, it's volunteers that make it happen. And I think that was the most comprehensive slide deck I ever saw, even in my little baby executive world, what the cable committee did to get this all going. So that's great. You guys are going to reinvent your mission statement and uh, work with Brian and team uh, moving forward. So that's perfect. And last but not least, uh, Mr. August, you are the expert here representing us. So my only ask to you is, do you represent other towns, other communities in the same facet, I would imagine, correct? Yeah, I represent several other municipalities, municipalities only. Okay. Yep. So I don't know if you look at our needs or wants, and you could say, you know something, Tewksbury didn't ask for A or B or C or X, Y, Z. So just, is that, could you ever do that? Look and say, you know something, oh, Tewksbury. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I, then we're going to hold you to that. Yes, <laughs> yes absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And I did, ha was in some uh, consultation with Brian about the preparation of that report in terms of the formatting specific functional equipment areas to show those needs, absolutely. Perfect, all right, thank you very much, Mr. August. That's all I had, Mr. Montori, anything on your side? No, that is it. Thank You're you, Mr. Good. Chairman. Thank you, thank you all involved. Thank you guys thank very you much. Thank you so much. Thank you, good great job. You. Thank, you. thank you very much. All righty. All right, I think we only have a few more items of business. So, um, last call, last call, anyone from National Grid? Seeing none, Mr. Montori, I'd like to take, like to kind of make, take the authority here and I'd like to kind of move forward unless you think it's not right um, to open up the public hearing, see if there's any yeah, about it and make I, it I a think decision. it's straightforward enough to take care of it. Okay, so I don't know, do we, can we make a motion to open the public hearing, please? Make a motion to open the public hearing. Okay. Second. National Grid. We have a motion and a second, all those in favor? Aye. Are there any about is to the National Grid poll position, poll petition? Okay. Okay, seeing none, I'll get a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close. Second. I have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 What's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I would like to um, make a motion to authorize the poll petition number 28728351 for National Grid, supporting the installation of a new poll to serve the one building on 500 Livingston Street. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Second, Mr. Second. Brian Dick, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Aye. And last but not least, if I'm, if I'm, if I think I'm correct here, keep me honest, team, is the order of new business. Do we have any new business? Okay, seeing none, I do believe, keep me honest, I think we covered everything. We did. We did. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. No. <laughs> Ms. Stronach. Yeah. We can't adjourn without wishing everybody a happy Thanksgiving. We have a lot to be thankful for in this town, and I just want to hope everybody enjoys their time and counts their blessings. I second that motion. All right, very good. Thank you, Ms. Stronach. All right, with that said, Ms. Wellman, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. A motion, do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you guys very much tonight. Thank you.